I know it is a lot of information. So it's recorded and I can send this out to everyone uh, afterwards as well. Let me make sure that it, it's recording. It is, okay. This is a lot of information. Um, so when you're at this screen, you want to make it at the largest size um, that you're planning on using the image um, for. So if you're unsure, I like to start at 11 by 14. That's a good size for prints. That's a good size for shirts and for tote bags and for stickers. Um, so I always like to do 11 by 14. If you have that preset, you can click on 11 by 14 here. If you don't have that preset, what you're going to do is you're going to click on this little folder here and hit it. You can click the plus. And then down here, you're going to click inches. And then we're going to do 11 by 14. And for DPI, that means dot per inch. We're going to keep it at 300, or we're going to type in 300. So we're doing 11 by 14. Oops. Ah. And 300 DPI. And that will open up a screen. Althea, no, 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 it's okay. You can join from a different device. We'll give you a minute or so to catch up, to, to log in. Okay, so everyone should be at this screen. If you're not at this screen, let me know. So the basics is with your fingers, you can zoom in by pinching and then stretching outward or the opposite out to in to zoom out. You can also do two fingers and turn your canvas however you would like. We're going to do a portrait image today. So we wanna keep it up and down. The basic functions up at the top, our gallery will bring you back to your previous um, screen. You have this wrench that will allow you to save um, and it will allow you to add photos, um, to create videos. We're going to be using the wrench today and then we're also going to be using this paintbrush. The paintbrush will bring you to the different tools. Let's start by clicking the inking and we're going to be using a studio pen today. So if you click on studio pen, it will bring you to the settings for the studio pen. Go ahead and drag your streamline to 80%. And then hit done. And then hit your, your um, paintbrush and it should bring you back to your screen. So from this screen, you have the, the smudge button, you have the erase button, you have your layers button and you have your um, color swatch. Go ahead and click your color swatch and drag your color swatch to the black. D did you say to use the studio pen? Yes. Is that the, the one? Oh, okay. The studio pen at 80% streamline. Does everyone have their 80% Streamline Studio Pen selected? And then go ahead and select the black by dragging, by dragging um, your inner circle down to the bottom. You'll know if you have black selected because at the top right corner, that circle will be filled with black. So what Streamline does, you can feel free to, to create some lines. What Streamline does is it allows for your pen to not make really curvy or jaggedy lines. I'm not gonna have you do this, but you can watch my screen 
I'm gonna bring my streamline down to 5% just so you can see. If I have a shaky hand, do you see how shaky that looks? With streamline at 80%, even if you have a shaky line, it will not come out shaky. It streamlines it to as curved and straight as possible. So feel free to try to just practice making your lines. The harder you press on your stylus, the thicker the line. The softer you press on your stylus, the thinner the line. There are two ways to undo. The first way is by putting two fingers and tapping both of the fingers at the same time, and that will undo. The other way to undo is by clicking on this back arrow here. What we're gonna do now is we're going to go ahead and pick up our hummingbird. Everyone should have received or should have downloaded. Yeah, of course, um, Lisa, I can show you again. So to create a line, you're gonna select your um, paintbrush. You're gonna go into inking and you're going to go into your studio pen and make sure that your studio pen is at 80% streamline. So to make lines, you're just going to put pressure, the larger the pressure, the thicker the line, the softer the pressure, the thinner the line. To undo, you just tap with two fingers or you tap the little back space in under here. You can also make your line thicker by increasing the point using the top right side, the top left sidebar. And again, these are just the very basic commands. So now what I'm going to have everyone do is to clear out their, their um, canvas. So make sure you undo to into the point where there's no more markings. OK, um, what it sounds like, Luisa, that you might be doing, um, look at the top right corner of your iPad. Is that black or is that white? If it's white, click it and drag your color down to the black. Let me know if that worked. I can send everyone the image. Give me one second. Okay, I just uploaded the image. So I'll give folks just a minute or so to download that image and you want to download it to your iPad. You don't want to download it to your computer or anywhere else. You want to make sure that you're, you're downloading it to your iPad. Where is it? Where can I find it? It's in the chat, Yoli. I uploaded it, it says Hummingbird Template. Or I can send it to your email. What do you prefer? Or you can download it from our website, elcomalitocollective.com. If you go to elcomalitocollective.com and you go to the events tab, under the events tab, it should say download file right next to the hummingbird. I'll give folks a minute or so to do that because we will need that for this next step. Luisa, is your is your um, is your paint brush selected?
Lisa, do you mind unmuting real quick just so I can troubleshoot with you where you're where you're at? Okay, is um, suggesting that on the left side, Lisa, right here, where it says brush opacity, it should be all the way to the top. Can you double check that to make sure that that's the case? And also for folks who are downloading the template, please give me the green light once you once you have it so that we can continue as well. Okay, I'm a little slow. So I'm at your website. Where can I find it? If you go to events. under the events tab. Okay, I say beyond the screen artist talks. Is um, that it? Nope, if you, um, here, let me pull up our website. It's um, under, if you click on events, that tab. Okay, oh, here we go. And then there should be a, don't forget to download the template, download file here. It's an outline of a hummingbird. Okay. Oops. Okay, I got it. Yay. Yay. Okay. So we have everyone's canvas should be clear. And what we're going to do is we're going to, let me clear mine. We're going to go into our wrench tab, which is right here. We're going to click add and we're going to click insert photo. It should bring up, it should bring up your hummingbird. It should bring, or you should go ahead and select your hummingbird photo, your template. Give me just one second. I also didn't have it, shame on me. Okay, you should go ahead and click on your template and it will look like mine. And what you're gonna do is you're with the, with the tip of your stylus, you're going to drag it up and you're going to drag it down until you have the size that you would like to work at. And then you're just going to click on this layers tab here. And we're going to name this layer. With your finger, tap on layer one, click on rename, and we're going to rename this layer reference. We're also going to click the add button and a new layer called layer two is going to appear. Go ahead and click on layer two, click rename, and we're going to name this layer the outline. So now everyone should have two layers, a layer called reference and a layer called outline. Okay, I have background color, reference, and inserted image. Should nope. I change 
one of those. Those were defaulted. Yeah, that's okay. Click on the inserted image and rename that um, reference. Yeah, oh, okay. And everyone will have the background um, color. So yes, it'll be three. Um, Althea, for the uh, DPI, you want to select 300. That's print quality. And that means 300 dots per inch. Okay. So now everyone should have their background color, their reference, and their outline. What you're going to do is with two fingers, you're going to tap your reference. And you should get a blue line that goes across the top. Once you have that blue line, with one finger, you can drag your image to the left, and that will make it a lower opacity or you can drag it all the way to the right, which will make it a darker opacity. Go ahead and put it between 20 and 25%. So we want that to be kind of gray. Hi, could you do that one more time? Sure. So you're gonna double click or double tap with two fingers on the reference layer. And then you should get a blue line across the top of your iPad and then with one finger, you can drag it left or right. You want to put it at about 20 to 25%. And once you have that, you're going to go ahead and click on the Layers button. And we're going to make sure that the Outline button is selected. And the way that you'll know is because it will be selected in blue. Once you've finished, you're going to click on the paintbrush and we're going to make sure that our studio pen is selected at 80% streamline. Does everyone's, is everyone's paintbrush highlighted with blue? Everyone's paint color is highlighted in black? Great. So now what we're going to do is you're just going to zoom in to your hummingbird and you're going to very carefully trace your hummingbird. Remember that you can increase the thickness of your point by using the top left sidebar. And you want to mimic that line. So take your time. This will take about 10 minutes. Go ahead and take your time just outlining your hummingbird. While you outline, it's really important that all of the lines connect. So make sure all of your lines are connecting. If you messed up a line, you can double tap to undo or click the undo button. Undo is going to be your best friend. If your lines don't aren't exactly like mine, that's okay. Again, the most important component or the most important part of this process is to make sure that all of the exterior black lines connect. If there's even a small hole, it's going to cause a problem later. When you get to parts of your hummingbird where the lines are a little bit thinner, like the feet, you can decrease the point level on your pen, again, by using the top left sidebar.
And the more you practice, the easier it will get. When you get to the eye, don't worry about filling in the eye. Just leave it a dark, or just leave it an outline circle. And when you're finished, your hummingbird will look like this. And as you're working, remember to breathe. I know that this is new for a lot of you, not all of you. And when you're working with a new process, sometimes it can get a little stressful. So remember, remember to breathe, take a deep breath, hold it and release. Know that you'll only get better with practice. And because this Thank is- Thank you, I needed that. <laughs> You're welcome. And also remember that for, for um, because today is a, a beginner level course, I provided this outline for you, but just, um, and I took, uh, I, it was a, a hummingbird picture that I saw on the internet that I just outlined the photograph. So you can do this with a photograph of your kids, of your pet. Um, I just simplified it and made the outline already for you. But the add photo function, um, you can add really whatever photo you want as long as it's not a copyrighted photo. So I'll give folks another couple of minutes. I know I did mine really quickly. And as folks finish up, if you can just give me a, a thumbs up or an okay on um, the chat or unmute yourself and let me know. That way I can kind of gauge where folks are at. And also thank you for taking the time to create with me today and to be present with, with ourselves. Uh, Althea, um, the brush that I used is um, the under ink and it is the Studio Pen at 80% Streamline. Remembering that there's so much destruction happening in the world and so much chaos. So taking the time to, to learn something new and to create something instead of um, destroy something, right? With everything that's happening in the world is so revolutionary and it's so powerful. So thank you for taking the time to be with us today, but more importantly, to be with yourselves and to be present and to be learning something new and creating something. That's really beautiful. We'll just give it another minute or so. And I see that Yoli's done. And again, as you finish up, go ahead and unmute and let me know or type it into the chat just so I can kind of gauge. Thank you so much, Kay. And as you zoom in, to your outline, you can zoom in and just make sure again that all of the exterior lines are connected. That is going to make a big deal. It will be a big deal if they're not. So if you're finished, just zoom in and follow your outline to make sure all of the lines touch. All of mine do.
great. And Marta's done. Kay is done. Yoli's done. So we're just waiting on a few more folks. And no judgment today. If you need a little liquid courage, a glass of wine or some water, help yourselves. I just did, <laughs> no judgments. Thank you, Rosa. Great, so I'll give it another minute or so. And remember that this is a safe space to make mistakes. If your lines aren't perfect, don't worry about it. You can always go back and clean them up later. And remember, this is just your first piece with us or with me. As you do more, your lines will get better and better and better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fifth of tequila. Um, for those of you who are finished, go ahead and click on your layers tab, which is the tab right next to the colors. And what we're gonna do is we're going to uncheck the reference box. So under reference, there should no longer be a checkbox in that box. And you'll see that, the, oh, that the, the reference photo that we were using underneath has now disappeared. Once you've checked off that box, what we're going to do is you're going to hold the outline box, oops. What you're going to do is you're going to click the outline box and drag it to the left. And you're going to hit duplicate. Now everyone should have two outline layers. You're going to click with your finger on the top outline layer and we're going to rename this layer color. So now everyone should have a color layer, an outline layer, a reference layer, and their background photo layer. Please let me know if you need help to get to this, to, the, to get to where we are. So to duplicate the layer, Rosa, you're gonna click on the layer and you're going to drag it to the left and it'll pull up a couple of options, lock, duplicate, and delete. You're going to click the duplicate option. And once you have that second layer, you're gonna click on, the, on one of the outlines and you're going to rename it color. And this is where we're going to start exploring with color a little bit. Great. So now everyone go ahead and click on your color layer. Make sure that the color layer is highlighted in blue. And once it's highlighted in blue, we're going to click on our paintbrush. We're going to select our color. And there are two rings, an outer ring and then the inner circle. Using the outer ring, we're going to drag it to the red option. And we're going to drag the inner circle. And we want it to be a burgundy. Once you've selected those colors, or once you've selected that burgundy, I'm gonna have you zoom in to your hummingbird we want to focus on this part of the hummingbird here. And what you're gonna do is you're going to select from this tip of the beak, oops, from this tip of the beak, we're going to drag it down under the armpit and up and around, okay? The lines don't have to be perfect.
we want the red line to touch the black line because we want all of the shapes to be enclosed shapes. So if you can see, this is an enclosed shape and it's enclosed all the way around. And the reason why that's important is because you're going to click on your color. Oops. Sorry, I just made a mistake. You're going to click on your color and you're going to drag it inside of that shape. We now have our Ruby hummingbird throat. Pretty cool, right? We're now going to click on our color and we're going to drag, drag it to the gray area. We don't want it to be white, we want it to be gray. And we're going to continue the belly of this hummingbird. We're going to, oops, we're going to continue. We want it to touch this red here. It's going to continue downward and then outward. Just like that. Once you have that enclosed shape, you're going to carry that gray into that shape. We're also going to carry this gray into the left part of the feathers. So this one here and this one here. So the far left four, one, two, three, four. Those should also be that color gray. Does everyone have these colors this far. Feel free to chat, type no into the chat if you need support. We are now going so to select a dark green for our hummingbirds, for our, our hummingbird. So we're going to go into the green section on the outer ring. We're going to drag our green into the bottom right corner, we want a forest green. And we're going to drag that green into the remaining part of our hummingbird. So the top of the head, the wings, and the remaining tail feathers. If you accidentally drop the color onto your line, it'll turn your entire line green. Make sure you undo because we don't want to lose that black outline. It's coming together really nicely, right? So if you've seen um, artists on social media do work like this, this is actually one of my pieces where you just create shapes with colors into the house and onto the butterflies. That's how this is done. You just create and continue to add different um, color blocking to create a piece like this. Today, we're gonna to have a little different approach. We want to select this gray again. The way that you're gonna do that is in between the two sidebars, there's a little square. If you click that square, you'll have a circle that comes up. You're gonna drag that circle into the gray and that's how you color match. So you don't lose that color. Oh my gosh, can you do that again? Sure. If you click on this little box in between the two sidebars, you'll get a circle that pops up. You can drag that circle to whatever color you want to color match. 
In this case, we want the gray. We want to fill in the three claws with that same gray. So go ahead and drag that gray right into your claws. just like that. And we want to fill in the eyeball with black. So go ahead and pick up the black by selecting the square and then just going over your black line and that will color match that black. And you can zoom in and drag it into your eyeball. And now your hummingbird should be fully colored in. Once your, co once your hummingbird is fully colored in, what we're gonna do is we're going to select the layers button. And this is really important. This changed my life when I was learning. So if you click the layers button and you click on the layer that we're currently working on, which is color, and you click alpha lock, you'll see in the layer that there will be a little checkered box on everything except for your hummingbird. What that does, and I'm not gonna have you do this, but I'm gonna have you just watch what that does is that it will prevent me from making any changes to anything that's not filled in. So for example, I have my black selected and I'm drawing and nothing's happening on the outside. It will only allow me to draw on the inside. So it actually locks everything except for what you're working on. In this case, we're working on anything that's filled in with color, which is our hummingbird. Is everyone to this point? Please let me know if you are stuck somewhere because we're going to move on to a different brush and a different technique. Beautiful, okay. So the Studio Pen at 80% Streamline is what you use to create nice even strokes with your inking tool. Um, to create nice clean shapes. Since we're going to move to painting, we're going to stop using the studio pen and we're going to go into the painting icon and we're going to go into wet acrylic. And we're not going to change the settings. The settings that are preloaded for this one are perfect. We're going to select the green of the hummingbird. Oops. And what we're going to do is we're going to select an even darker green. So we want to drag our green down so that it's a little bit darker. I'm gonna zoom in and that's the color that we want there. So go ahead and select that green. Your opacity should be, I'm sorry, your, not your opacity, but your, um, at about nine or 10% for the thickness. And what we're gonna do is we're going to start building our shadows. For all of the colors, we always want to have three tones, a dark tone, a medium tone, and a light tone. So we'll want to do that with our green, we'll want to do that with our red, and we'll want to do that with our grays and whites. We're starting with our green today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this dark green to go in all of the places that are going to cause shadow. It's going to, there's going to be a shadow beneath the wing. 
So we're going to go ahead and just, oops, we're going to go ahead and apply the dark shadow there. This wing is also behind this fore wing or front wing. So this is also going to be in shadow. And there's going to be some shadow right underneath this wing here. So everyone should have those three places in shadow. We're also going to put this feather here. You can bring down your brush stroke if you'd like. But this shadow here, or this feather here, will also be in shadow, and so will this one. It's okay if you go over your black line. Great. We now have our darkest point on our green. We're going to go ahead and select our mid-tone, which is our medium tone. We're going to click on our green, which should already be at the forest green. We're going to drag it up and bring it into a mid-tone. The mid-tone will be in the center somewhere, and then the brightest tone will be towards the top. So we want to select a nice mid-tone, and this is really up to you. This is your hummingbird, so you get to make whatever artistic choices you want and select whatever color you would like. So with our mid-tone, what we're going to do, oops, is we're just going to start to bring this mid-tone that's a little too bright. I'm gonna bring mine down. There we go. We're going to bring our our mid tone, and it's going to look a little bit like the color that's already on on your hummingbird. I'm just going to bring in that mid tone, brighten up our hummingbird a little bit, and we're going to go over the red slightly get to start making that red line disappear. And we're going to bring this color up on top and into the wings. Again, don't worry too much about your black line. We're also going to bring this mid-tone into this top wing here and across the top feather. And the reason why that alpha lock was so important is because it's not going to let you bring that green into these white areas. If you hadn't done that alpha lock, you would be bringing that green into the white areas and that would cause a problem for you later. We're also going to bring this mid-tone, oops, into just this top feather here and this feather here. Again, don't worry about your black line. I'll give folks just a second to catch up. Yeah. So Althea, um, in order to do the alpha lock, you had to do it before there was anything on the white. To do the alpha lock, you're gonna click on the layers button. You're gonna click on the layer that you're working on, which is color for us. And then you're going to click alpha lock.
So the reason why I said don't worry too much about your don't worry too much about um, about your black lines is because I'm going to show you how to fix that black line. Go ahead and zoom into your hummingbird. Click on the layers button. So your layers are like a, a sheet of transparency paper. And so each layer is a different sheet that's transparent. Your outline is currently behind your color. We want your outline to be on top of your color. So you're going to click on the outline and you're going to hold it for just a second. And then you're going to drag it to the very top of your layers. So your outline should be on top, then your color, and then your reference, and then your background color. Your reference is unchecked at this point. We still want to work on our color outline, so your color out our layer should be in blue. Now that we've moved the outline layer to the top, your lines will be nice and crisp. Do you see that? So it doesn't matter if I paint green over my black line. Oops. My black line will always stay on top. And that's why it was so important at the beginning that we duplicated our outline so that we could bring the outline back to the top. Oh my God, that is so cool. Yay. I know it changed my life when I learned the alpha lock and then the duplication of outline. It's looking really good, right? Cool. So now that we have our two tones of dark green and our bright green, we now want to select our light green. So again, the dark tones are towards the bottom, the mid tones are in the center of our color wheel, and then the nice bright tones are at the top. I'm gonna select a nice minty color. So instead of going top right, which is like a neon color, I'm gonna go more towards the white and select a more minty color. You can select whatever color that you would like. Make sure that you're still on your color layer. That's where we want to work. The color layer should be highlighted in blue. And now what we're gonna do is we're just going to add our highlights. So we're going to give our bird a nice highlight above the eye and down into the beak. We're also going to give our, our hummingbird a highlight along the edge of the wing, all the way up to the top. Just like that. We're going to give our hummingbird a highlight along the top right feather and down each of the smaller feathers. We're also going to highlight the tail feathers, one, two, and just the third one, three. And along the back here, just a couple of strokes. And it's crazy how quickly the hummingbird starts to come to life, right? I'll give folks a minute or so to catch up and then we'll move to working on the wing. So for the wing, what we're gonna do is we're going to add some nice hues of blues. So go ahead and select your color wheel. We're going to bring it down to the blues and we're going to I'm going to choose this blue here. So if you see where my outer ring is, it's here. And my inner ring will be towards the top right. Again, this is your hummingbird. You can select whatever blue you would like, but this is going to be some of the shadows. We're going to add some of the shadows 
along. I'll zoom in here so you can see. Actually, I want it to be a little darker. We're going to add some shadows along these ridges here. And we're going to also add a shadow along the bottom edge of each of the blue, of each of the black lines. So there, 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 and there. And that's because where the wing folds, there will be a shadow. I'll give folks a second to go ahead and do that. Take a deep breath, hold and release. Another deep breath and release. Do this process if you're noticing that you're having a little tension in your shoulders, in your back. Make sure that you remind yourself to breathe. Make sure to be gentle with yourself. Remember that learning something new is never easy and being gentle with yourself is important. Let's go ahead and select your blue. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag the blue to the top left, closer to the white. We want to create a nice transparent blue for the wing. So I'm gonna zoom in so you can see. With this blue, what we're going to do is we're going to run it along the bottom portion of the wing and get rid of that green. Remember, the more pressure you apply to your stylus or to your Apple Pencil, the thicker it will apply. Okay. So we have that nice wing starting to come through. And we're also going to apply this blue color along the top of each of these kind of curly Q feathers we created. Just like that. And just like that, our wing is finished. We're now going to move to working on the ruby throated portion of our hummingbird. So I'll give you a second to catch up. Sorry, those are my dogs saying, everyone's doing a great job. Again, I'll just give you another minute or so to catch up. I know it's a lot of information, but again, thank you to whomever, I can't remember who um, reminded me to record the session. After the session, I'm happy to email it out to everyone because I know that this is a lot of information. So let's go ahead and start with our ruby throat. So pop quiz, how do you select this color? Do y'all remember? You click on this little square in between um, the two left sidebars and you drag it over the red. The way that you'll know that you've selected that red is because the circle on the top right of your screen should also turn that color. So let's go ahead and work on the ruby portion. We want to create a shadow. We want to create a shadow. 
Um, so we're going to select a little bit of a darker color, a little bit of a darker burgundy. So we wanna just drag that burgundy a little towards the bottom. And again, using that same technique, we're working downward this time, we're just going to start applying some of this burgundy just by clickety click, click, click. We want to get rid of some of these hard lines that we created when we did the color shapes. And we're just going to start creating some of these shadows. We want to start mixing the red with the green. So we want to tap our stylus gently over some of the green so that the two colors start to mix. So now you should have some of the dark tones and then you should also have some of the bright red tones that we had initially used in our hummingbird. It's okay, Althea. I was like, I thought you thought you were like, oh no, pop quiz. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to select our color. We now want to select a mid-tone red, something a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna bring it up a little bit. And now with this, oops, with this mid-tone red, we're going to start adding some of this color here. Again, the darker or the more pressure you apply to your stylus. Perfect. And again, play with it. This is your hummingbird. So that's our second tone. And finally, we want to apply a third tone. I'm going to bring my outer circle down to where it's a little bit more pink. I'm going to select kind of like this bright pink, and I'm going to bring it close to the white here. That's what I'm going to use for my highlight color. And I'm going to highlight I'm going to use, oops, I'm going to use this color to highlight a little bit my ruby throated hummingbird here. Bring that color upward. And just like that, my hummingbird has its three tones. And if you really wanted to spend a lot of time, you could spend a lot of time really blending all of these colors. Because this is a beginner's level course, I'm just introducing you to all of the possibilities that you can do with Procreate using this hummingbird. So we won't be spending a lot of time learning how to blend all of the colors. But in another course, I'll be, I can show you, in a portraiture course, I will be showing you, if folks want to sign up for that course later, how you can blend all of the colors really seamlessly. Perfect. So now we have the three tones in the greens. We have the three tones in the reds. We're going to work on the final portion of our hummingbird, which is these gray tones. For my gray tones, I'm going to bring my color up to the yellow. And I'm going to bring the inner circle to the top of my color wheel. And this is what's going to be my mid-tone. And it's going to be this nice yellow color that I'm going to start blending downward. over this gray and that's going to become the body of my hummingbird. A, a painting trick just in general for folks who are, um, who are painters, always try and avoid pure white, always try and avoid pure black when possible. It will flatten out your painting unless you're going for a really graphic look. And again, this is just the basics. So I'm not going to show you how to blend all of the colors really seamlessly, but I do want for folks to start to get to know the materials a little bit. So as you can see, 
you can still see some of the gray underneath. You can still see, and you can see the yellow. So the gray will act as our shadow and the yellow will act as some texture for our feathers. I'll give folks a second to catch up. And what we're going to do now is we're going to drag this yellow and we're going to bring it into the white a little bit. We don't want to make it pure white, but we do want it to be on the white spectrum. And what we're going to do is we're going to add, use this white to create some highlights on our feathers. And we're going to just highlight the left portion, not underneath the wing because we know that that is in shadow. We want to bring it up a little bit into the ruby throat and then down into the body. We also want to bring it into the left four tail feathers. And I'll give folks just a second. To catch up. Isn't he looking super cute? She, they, so cuties. Since we have this white, we're going to also just add a couple of extra highlights right above the crown on the head. Again, remember to use your undo if you feel like you overdid it like I just did. We're also going to add a highlight right on the edge of the wing here. And on the edge of the feathers, just like that. So now for something a little fun. We're going to select our layers and then you're going to click on the background color. If you drag the background color, oops, if you grab, drag the background color wherever you would like on your color option. You can pick a color for your background. I'm going to choose this blue here, this royal blue, but you can select whichever color you would like. I'm going to give folks just a second. Did I lose anyone? Feel free to type into the chat or to, to Unmute yourself and let me know if I'm going too fast. Once you've, can I repeat that part? Yeah, of course. 
So what you're going to do is you're click, going to click on the layers. You're going to go into the background color layer. And you have three of these toolbar or three of these bars here. The top one, you can scooch, scoot from left to right to pick whatever color you want your background to be. I moved mine to the blue and selected kind of like this nice bright blue here, but you can select whatever color you would like. And then once you have a color for the background that you would like, then you can click on the layers button one more time. So I'll give folks just another second to go ahead and select whatever color they want for the background. And then we're gonna go back to our color layer. So make sure that your color layer is selected and we're gonna go back to that same color white that we were using. And the reason being is because I forgot to highlight our beak here in white. So we want to make sure that that beak is nice and bright. And just like that. So go ahead and make that beak nice and bright because we're going to add some shading to it in just a second. Once that beak is nice and bright, go ahead and select a color purple by dragging the outer ring to the blues and purples and selecting a nice purple shade. I'm gonna select this dark shade here. And what we're going to do with this color is we're going to, to attach it to the eye and attach it to the bottom of the eye and to the back of the eye. Just like that. Give our bird a little personality. Just like that. I'll give you just a second to do that. Before we move on to the last two steps. Go ahead and click on your layers button. We're going to add a new layer. It's going to be layer number four but with your finger, you're going to click that and you're going to rename this. Let's rename this circle. So we're going to have that layer and we want that layer to be selected. So everyone should have a layer titled circle and that layer should be selected. Go ahead and select the color yellow. And now I'm gonna show you how to use a different tool. We're gonna to click on this tool that looks like an S. Everyone should be on that tool that looks like an S. And we're going to click ellipse. Everyone should be under ellipse. And we're also going to click color fill. So there should be three things selected. 
this little tool that looks like an S, the ellipse option, and the color fill. If you click and drag, you'll be able to create an ellipse. Go ahead and create an ellipse. You can double tap it with your two fingers to undo if that's not the ellipse that you wanted to create or if you didn't get the shape right. And you can continue to do that until you have your ellipse wherever it is that you would like. Don't worry too much at this point what it looks like. Go ahead and create an ellipse and then click on your click on your layers. The reason why your hummingbird disappeared, remember we talked about each layer being kind of like a sheet of transparency? The circle is on top of your color. We want the circle to be behind your color. So what you're gonna do is you're going to click on the circle and you're going to bring it underneath your color. And now your circle should be behind your hummingbird. Pretty awesome, right? If you wanted to change the color of your circle, you make sure that you're selected, your circle is selected, you find the color that you want, and then you click it and drag it into your circle. Question. Yes. So when I make that ellipse shape, I'm having trouble centering it. And um, when I try clicking on it, it just like opens up another eclipse. How do you move it around? Great, let me show you how to do that. So I'm on my circle here. I have my S tool selected. I have my lips selected and I also have my color fill selected. So I'm going to make my ellipse. Let's say that's not centered and that's not where I want it, but that is the color that I want. You can then click this arrow button, or this arrow icon, I'm sorry. And then if you want to keep it uniform, which means that it's not going to change the shape, just the location, you can keep it uniform and you can move the ellipse around make it bigger, make it smaller, but it's going to stay uniform. If you want to change the shape, then you want to click freeform and then you can change the shape of the ellipse. You can make it a circle. Did that ask you, you. yeah. Julie? Yes, awesome. Great. And then again, we want to move the circle behind the color so that your hummingbird stays on the top. We only have two more steps to go before we move to those final two steps that are going to just take two minutes. Do we have any questions? Is anyone stuck? Can I fill? Can I answer any questions? Okay, how did you change the color of this of the eclipse again? Sure. So you're gonna make sure that your ellipse is um, is highlighted. So you want it to be highlighted in blue. Then you're going to go to your circle, your color wheel, and you're gonna select whatever color you want to change it to. And then you're gonna drag that color right into your circle. Oh, that's right. Duh. <laughs> No worries, yeah. So you can experiment with different color options and figure out. And then again, if you wanted to change the background color and you're like, I really like the yellow, but the blue's not looking so great, you can always change the background color. Cool. So now we're gonna go to two, to this final step. For this final step, we're going to select the white. So we want to choose your color. You want to bring it to the far top left, which is the white on your color wheel. 
and we're going to select a different tool. We're going to go into inking and we're going to go into the fine tip pen. Okay, the fine tip is for those really intricate details. Go ahead and click the, the, the fine tip pen. And then we're going to select the outline. The outline is the, should be at the very top. We want to make sure that that's selected, highlighted in, um, in blue. And if you notice, we forgot to fill in that circle initially with the black. Let's go ahead and do that now. I forgot to, to ask you all to do that. So if you click the little square box in between the two sidebars and select the block, just drag the black right into that circle. And now your eye is back to black. Now we can go back and select the white. I apologize, that was my mistake. So now we should have the fine tip tool selected as well as the color white. This is where we can go ahead and make really, really fine selection or fine lines. Go ahead and drag your brush size all the way to the very top on the top left sidebar. What we're gonna do is we're going to create we're going to create our eye our little eye highlights. So I'm gonna make one there and I'm gonna make a bigger one here. just like that. I'm also going to outline the top portion of my eye here. Again, just this very fine tool. And I'm also going to do the bottom portion of the eye. And again, feel free to zoom in as close as you need to make your lines nice and clean and perfect. And that'll give our hummingbird that nice that nice eye, just like that. Okay, um, which layer are we doing the, the white on? Is that the question? Your white you want to do on the outline layer, the very top layer. And that'll give your eye that nice glossy look. I'll give folks just another second to catch up. We have just one final step. I'm going to select the blue. And remember, the way that you select is by clicking this little square in between the two sidebars. I'm going to select the blue or the color of my background. You can select whatever color you would like. And using the technical pen, 
So if you select the paintbrush and then you go to technical pen, I like the technical pen. This is what I use to, to sign my pieces. You can go ahead and sign your work. You all made a hummingbird. I hope y'all are proud of yourselves. Procreate is not, is an, it's not an easy tool. Um, so I hope that today's class helped you understand a little bit more of the basics, um, how to fill in color, how to, to um, use the alpha lock, how to use your basic tools, how to create a background. Um, I mean, the, the, the skills that you learned today, you can create stickers, lapel pins, um, you can create posters, advertisement, all kinds of things. And so the final thing is that you can save your image by going to the wrench and then clicking share. And then this is where you get to select how you want to share it. Most um, locations will accept a JPEG file. So that'll be the um, most common. So if you're uploading to PS Print or if you're uploading to Redbubble or wherever it is that you sell your work or print your images, they'll most likely want a JPEG, a PNG, or a PDF. Um, so you can select whichever one you would like. Even if you select JPEG now, you can always come back into your file and resave it as a PDF or as a different file type. For now, I'm gonna select JPEG. It'll say export and then you can decide how you want to save it. You can email it to yourself. I'm just gonna click save image. And now that image is saved into my images on my iPad. And just like that, everyone, you have your hummingbird. Can I answer any questions for anyone before we say buenas noches? I would just like to say thank you so much. You are an awesome teacher. I've learned so much. Um, and I'm going to try and keep this up because my problem is I'll do something and then I'll walk away from it for such a long time and you forget, you know, so um, hope you do some more classes. Thank you. You're welcome. I will definitely be doing some more classes. Ah, yay! And then, yeah, uh, you're, you're on mute, but if you want to unmute yourself, feel free to. I just love it. It's so awesome. <laughs> And again, you know, this is this is um, a first for you, but also know that I was really nervous today. This is my first class. Uh, I teach, I facilitate a lot. I facilitate like two or three classes per week, but this is my first Procreate class. So also no hard feelings. If there's like feedback um, that y'all want to provide, even in email or whatever, feel free to provide it so that I can continue to get better. But this was my first um, Procreate teaching class. So I'm, I hope that it was okay. And I- You did great. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, really I, awesome. Thank you so much. Yay! So, you know, we I teach um, two painting or one painting class per week um, and six painting classes per month because we do a couple on the weekends. Um, but I'm going to try and incorporate two of the monthly classes as Procreate classes. I kind of wanted to see kind of like what, how today went because I was also really nervous. Um, but it seems like everything went okay. So um, please look out for, for more Procreate classes. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Um, anybody else have any closing remarks or closing questions before I end the meeting? No? Okay. Well, thank you everyone. I'll email out the recording um, so that y'all will have that and I'll see you all uh, soon, I hope. All right, see you next time. Thank you. Thank you much. You're welcome. Adios. Bye.